Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for another Get Fit With Me series presents accountability. And also I'm gonna do just a little bit more of a recap um, in, re in reference to the um, Paris Olympics, which, which just concluded. So yeah, um, this isn't gonna take very long because I'm not really gonna like go over everything. I'm just gonna kind of kind of go over the highlights of track and field. I kind of, um, I think I shared the story that um, Bri Benjamin won for the United States when it comes to um, the 400 meter hurdles. And then Carson Rohm got second and uh, Dos Santos got third. And they're like kind of the big three. Um, I like though when they were talking about that race. Oh yeah, by the way, we're getting right into it. <laughs> we're not gonna waste any time. Um, one of the things that I do like about the announcers when it came to this particular race, other races I'm not, I wasn't a fan of, I'm going to say that right now, um, was that they kind of compared them three to like the tennis rivalry between Nadal, Roger Feather, and, um, oh my gosh, Djokovic, or and interchangeable when Djokovic wasn't around before Djokovic was, um, uh, I want to say, um, Andy Murray. But Andy Murray, his, he wasn't as consistent when he came to tennis. But anyway, the whole point is they, that was the comparison that they went with. And I was like, yeah, that actually is kind of that. Because you know it's going to be probably one of them who win. It's just a matter of which one did. And this time... Um, for the first time when it comes to like the Olympics, um, it was Rye Benjamin. Rye Benjamin is still undefeated when it comes to the hurdles So for this year. So it's kind of awesome, kind of dope. Um, his plan finally came together. So that's what happened with that. Um, another event that took place was the 5,000 meter race. And um, this is where I did not like the announcer so much because they were glazing. <laughs> they were glazing Jacob Inkerbertson. I, but I kind of understood it because one of the um, commentators was British. So a little bit of a European bias, I could tell, because it took me forever for me to understand, because I, I watched the race, right? And Inkerbertson, yeah, he, he did his thing. I will give him that. He 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 got the gold in that. And then silver, I think, was a Kenyan athlete. And then the bronze, it was kind of a little bit of a tight race. So um, Grant Fisher did end up winning, or not winning, but getting a bronze. But, like, I was waiting forever for them to tell me that, but they were so busy talking about Jacob Inca Brinson. I was like, oh, my gosh, shut the... <laughs> I was getting so irritated. I was like... Are you gonna like tell me if you know Grant Fisher got bronze or not? Because it took forever for them to finally say it, but then they did. So there was that. Um, what else happened? Um, I kind of don't want to really go over the so the women's um, relay 100 relay. Um, the, they won. Um, not the cleanest handoff, but so. Um, uh, Shakiri Richardson did come back home with a gold, but just a relay goal, not individual goals. So there's that. Um, and Gabby Thomas was on this team too, but she was also on the four by four relay team too. So she actually, spoiler on that, got that four by four. That was one of those, the four by four was, um, for the women was the um that was for them to lose like i i there was no in my head i was thinking i don't see how they're gonna lose this and yeah they dominated the four by four for the women's relays so yeah that was a non-issue now the men's side um when it comes to 100 relay oh gosh they blundered it they blundered it. So they had some substitutions. Um, honestly, if they would have kept their, the people that they had in for like the rounds for the, for the 100 relay, the sad thing is they probably would have won. 
because their, their handoffs when they were going through the rounds was clean. It's adding the different people, moving the other people around. No. Um, Fred Curley, about time he got the baton, he, there was no way he was catching anyone. Um, so we didn't even, we didn't even get on the podium for that. It was, it was pathetic. And unfortunately, it was Kung Fu Kenny who kind of blundered it. I was like, oh my gosh. And it was, it was kind of embarrassing because like, that's like our like signature event. So when the United States does not make the podium for that event, that's, that's no good. It's no good. So that's what happened when I came to the men's for um, 4 by one But the 4 by 4 they, they did that. They did that. Um, it was a little bit closer than I wanted it to be, but they did that. Um, Ry Benjamin was the anchor, and you're probably wondering why wasn't Quincy, who won the 400 meter flat, why wasn't he the anchor? He actually did share um, on um, Shan Sharp and Ocho Cinco's um, show that they have on YouTube called Nightcap. Um, which, by the way, shout out to them. They've been they've been the only like kind of like sports like people that have been really, 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 really highlighting the Olympics. Well, track and field mainly. Um, they're not doing the distance as much as I would like, but they're still, I mean, they're the only people that like I see on YouTube that are really talking about the, like the track and field stuff. And they're also interviewing a lot of the athletes. So Quincy was actually on that, um, on that show. And he mentioned that he, he, his hamstrings wasn't feeling great and he still has a diamond leap left after the Olympics. So he didn't want to chance it by like injuring it, doing the relay, which not a problem because Ry Benjamin had it covered and they won. Um, Botswana though's relay team looks strong. And I think so if they keep that momentum going, well, I know definitely for world championships next year, that's the team to look out for. And Los Angeles, who might need to look out for that team, Baswan, the Baswan team, because, um, yeah, they're trying. They're got. They're they were close. I mean, they got they got um, silver, but they were close. They were close. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then besides that, let's talk a little bit of the marathon. And I'll tell you about what's going on with me. So. Um, Okay, so let's talk about a couple of things. So I think I mentioned the 10,000 meter women's race. Um, that, I think I did talk about that already. No, I didn't talk about that. That one, um, so I'm trying to remember who got gold and silver, but the significant athlete who got the bronze was Stefan Hassan. And Stefan Hassan already got bronze for like the 500 meter race. And she's still at the marathon. So, and we already know this is a Stefan Hassan Stan account. I don't care if she's from the Netherlands. I don't care if she's representing the Netherlands. I saw her, and I know y'all probably getting sick of me here saying this story. But I saw her run the Chicago Marathon last year in multiple places on the course. Because I was all over that course. Because I know that course like the back of my hand because it doesn't really change much. And... That was, she was this, I've never seen a woman run so smoothly, but like look gone, gone with the wind, just gone. I mean, she's the second fastest woman to run a marathon. And she, I mean, again, she set the course record. So, I mean, and she really only started doing marathons past year. She's barely started doing marathons. And she's just, and she's doing what she's doing. Um, I don't want to skip ahead to that quite yet. Let's first talk about the men's marathon. Um, and for the men's marathon, um, the United States, two of the athletes finished in the top 10. The third athlete, I'm not sure what happened with them. Um, but um, a late Ethiopian athlete, well, I mean late, he originally was not going to be the one who represented Ethiopia for the marathon, but they... Um, I guess the person who originally was supposed to represent Ethiopia for the marathon um, had to bow out because of injury or whatever, probably overtraining, because <laughs> that's a very common thing. Um, and so this late entry ended up winning and setting an Olympic record. And this course 
was a ridiculous course. When I tell you this marathon course was, I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it, at least not for a PR. Um, there's, it's hilly, but it's not like you'll get relief. You, so it's flat at the beginning, and then you have these hills. But I mean, the hills are, it's a climb climb, and the relief ain't relieving. It's not like Boston, like the hills just keep going. And then you do get a downhill, but the downhill is such a steep downhill. And this is at the around mile, between like mile 16 to like 20, you're going downhill. So when you're fatigued and you have to basically try to stop yourself from falling. And for the women's race, it's one of the women almost did crash into another woman during the race, during this part, because it's just so... It was steep and also too, there was water stops and stuff everywhere because in both days of the marathon, so the women's marathon was on a Sunday, the men's, which closed, closed the Olympics, um, the closed the track and field events basically. And then the men's marathon was um, Saturday. So the women's day was harder though. <laughs> and um, so yeah, that's who won for the men though. Um, and then I'm trying to think, before I go to the women's marathon, I think I skipped a couple other things. I, I'm sure I have. Um, for the high jump, we did get an American who got silver medal. So that was good. Um, I think it was the first time in a while that's happened. Um, the 800, we didn't do anything when it came to that. That kind of was like a little bit of a dud. Um, oh, and then also too, with, um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else that happened? I'm pretty sure that was it when it came to like the United States on, um, when it comes to like the track and field part. So let's get to the meat and potatoes. The reason why I even wanted to even come up on here. Safasan, goat, goat. She, not only did she do three events and meddled in all three events, the last one, the marathon, she got gold. She won that thing. And the thing about it is, I kind of felt, I, I felt it in my spirit she was going to win that. I, I was like, this is her marathon to lose. In my head, I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to win it. The fact, as soon as I heard this is what she was going to do, I knew she was going to do that. She just had that in her. She has that in her. And her track, her track, um, her track background contributed, contributed big time to her winning. Because the women's race, so the men's race was very, um, it was kind of oddly fast, fastly paced. Um, and there was a lot of surges that were happening because of the water situation. And it happened with the women too, but I feel like the women were a little bit more prepared for that because I'm pretty sure their male counterparts kind of gave them a heads up. Um, because water bottles for each athlete was in the order of each country. So if you're not in states, there's no reason to do the surge. You could just, you know, get your bottle. Because <laughs> you're like last, you know. You're one of the last countries because of the U. Um, and so I think, I don't know how much that really makes a difference when it comes to a hot day. But I feel like it makes a huge difference. And the other thing is a lot of the women and men alike had these bands. And it had like a technology to it where it kept your like forehead, it kept your body temperature nice and cool. So then the other thing that um, was said um, was they, they did have the tandem lines there. And for those who don't run marathons, um, Chicago Marathon has this too, by the way. Um, a marathon distance is, it is exactly 26.2. But that's if you cut the corners properly. If you don't cut the corners properly, you're going to be running more than 26.2. 
So no athlete wants to run more than what they have to run, especially for that type of grueling of a distance. So what they do when it comes to a lot of these major races, especially the majors, they will have a line. It's usually a blue line that's all along the road. And you'll see a lot of the runners run kind of as close to that line as they can so that they can try to get that 26.2 and not run more. And um, Stefan, Stefan Hassan, all the athletes over there probably wouldn't have that much of an issue doing that because that's kind of like how track works. You're running, you know, you're kind of running a tandem on a track. Um, but the reason why I said her track and field background came handy because all the way up until I want to say in mile 20, so mile 20, there's six more miles left. There's still like a group of six of them running together and no one is wanting to do the surge. Everyone's just kind of looking at each other like who's going to be the one who, who gets us going and no one was willing to do it. And when I tell you that surge did not happen till mile 25. And you know who has an advantage when it comes to that? It's Fahasan. She's like, other than the world record holder who was still there in the mix, she is the only one that, I mean, she, has, she probably has a better kick than all of them because, I mean, she... She she moved, she bumped up to a marathon this year. Last Olympics, she did the five thousand. She did the um, fifteen hundred. So she has fifteen hundred legs if she needs to do that. She just chose not to do that this year because it wasn't going to work for her schedule. You know, um, maybe next year she'll try to do four. I, I wouldn't put it past her. She seems like that kind of athlete where she'll, she'll do that and she'll medal in all four. I mean, I I believe it. I. Again, when I saw her run, I wasn't even that surprised. I was like, dang. And also, too, she is she's amazing in person. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, my gosh. She literally looks like she's floating. <laughs> and the skin is skinning. Her hair is beautiful. The the signature signature braids down. And, and then, you know... It's just amazing. But anyway, so the surge happened in mile 25. And one of the Ethiopian athletes who was in first place tried to box her in. And she bowled her real good. She was like, ah. Because, I mean, if you if you watch the mid-distance races in track and field, bows, it's a contact sport. Bows will get thrown. And for how long and lengthy she is, those bows probably be hurt when she does it. And I don't think she really has to do it very often, but yeah, she did. She did a little bit of a shoulder check, like B. Like I don't think she said that, but it was kind of like a, if you get in my way, and then she was gone, and no one was catching her, and then she ran away with that race literally, and won, and won, and no one could catch her because none of them could kick her. Even the world record holder, her legs were so tired out that she couldn't kick her. I was like, Safa Hassan is seriously the go. <laughs> I, it, one thing, okay, one thing I will say is, so that morning where I was going to watch the marathon, but I was, I was going to do a run first, and then I had to work a little bit that day. I made the mistake of going on Instagram, and I got it got spoiled for me. I was pissed. <laughs> I did not want to get spoiled. I really wish I would have saw it. So I already knew while I was watching it that she was winning it. I just didn't know how it was going to go down. And I was so, I was kind of irritated that I knew that, I knew that she won. But even, anyway, neither here nor there. Um, so that was pretty much kind of like the Olympics. I did not watch a closing ceremony. Okay, whatever. Don't, don't, don't do me. Don't do me. And the next Olympics is going to be Los Angeles, California. And... Do any of y'all know why it's going to be there? I want to go into it, but I don't. Because I just, I don't want to talk about the um, IOC politics. But Los Angeles is saving them again. Let's just say that. If you know your Olympic history, a similar situation happened in 1984. And that's why the United States... And, and it was Los Angeles host the Olympics then. 
and this history is literally repeating itself. And 84, I wasn't around for that because I was literally, that was the year I was born. So, okay, I was like a couple months old. <laughs> I was like three or four months old. Um, but clearly I don't remember it. But it's just wild that history's repeating itself. And hopefully this time around after um, Los Angeles spells them out again, they don't do, they don't get greedy and do the same crap again. Because, um, you know what, let's get into it real quick. I, I'm not gonna go too, too into detail. Long story less long, none of the countries wanted the Olympics because of it being, because of it being kind of scammy. When it comes to the, the reason to have it. You're basically putting, you're at risk of basically putting your city slash country and whole entire debt to host it because of the demands of what IOC wants for their standards. Um, and also the fact that new sports keep getting added. And with Los Angeles already, you might already see the news that Los Angeles is removing a lot of sports. They're adding some back to it, but they're removing a lot of sports because the reason why the Los Angeles, the reason why they're doing it is Los Angeles this um, in 2028, Number one, they were the only two cities that won. Like, so Paris back in like 20, whenever they did the bid this last time around, I don't remember when it was. I think it was 2019 when they did the bid to figure out what cities are going to host whoever um, for 2024. Paris and Los Angeles were the only ones that wanted it. Paris, so they didn't even do another bid thing because no other country wanted it. So they gave it to Paris for 2024 and they gave it to Los Angeles for 2028. Paris pretty much kind of tried to stay on budget. And from what I heard, they did stay on budget overall. They did not build a lot of new stuff. And Los Angeles, similar situation. This is the same thing happened back in 84. Los Angeles already has the infrastructure for most of these sports because it's a major, major sports town that's spread out. So they already had the infrastructure for all this kind of thing. So that's the reason why, okay, they're not gonna have to, they're not gonna have to spend a ton of money to do what it do. And um, yeah, but anyway, something's gonna have to change when it comes to that. Um, let me know what y'all think, what they should do. I personally think what they should do to stop that from being an issue is just have maybe like one city in each continent um, have a rotation of who hosts it. And then that way you're keeping the infrastructures already there and you just repair the infrastructures within time. You're not costing any additional costs. And, um, and then maybe some places that have a larger mass like Asia Maybe do two, no, just do the one. Maybe just, do, cause I would say do Tokyo for like Asia. Um, and then do like, I would say London really for like Europe. And for like the winter, maybe do rotation like three places, like three continents, you know? And I think that will solve a lot of problems. But anyway, that's pretty much, um, Kind of what's been going on with the Olympics, a little bit of aftermath. I don't even want to talk about the Jordan Jordan Childs thing um, with that bronze medal controversy. I I just uh. <laughs> let's keep it positive and let's sh shift gears and let me tell you about how my training's going. So in regards to my ultra marathon training, <laughs> I like how we transitioned. Um, so. Um, I decided I'm still gonna do it, okay? I actually ran 17 yesterday and walked three miles today, try to get my 20 miles in. And the day before that, I ran 10. So back to back to back to back. So I've been pretty consistent when it comes to my running lately, which I'm very, very happy about. I'm not 100% paying free, but I'm not, it's not as bad as what it was. So I'm trying to keep an eye to make sure I don't um, make my um, Achilles tendonitis worse because that's what it turns out is going on. I have Achilles tendonitis and 
I've had that on and off for years. Um, <laughs> really ever since I became a runner. But now since I'm a little bit heavier and me twisting my ankle and overcompensating last year when I broke my toe on the other foot, it's, it's catching up. So I decided after this ultra though, I'm gonna take next year off from running a marathon or ultras. I'm gonna focus solely on half marathons. I have three half marathons and plan, well, four. Never mind, four. I have four half marathons I plan on doing next year. And three of them are in different states. So I'll get my states out of the way. Um, so I am planning on doing that. Cause I wanna get my speed back up to par. <clears throat> and also to half marathon training, it, it, for me, it helps me like kind of get my weight down. Um, and that's kind of the priority. And cause honestly, marathons are more with the weight that, that I've put on past couple of years. It, it's not sustainable. I won't be able to run long term with this extra weight. So we're gonna work to get this weight off. And half marathons for me is an easy way for me to get the weight off. And along with me continuing what I've been doing, eating better, getting better sleep, not drinking as much. I mean, right now I'm not even drinking at all. Like I've been, I kind of cut that out. Um, I've already lost like two pounds already. <laughs> You know, so it, it's, it's getting there. It's just going to be a little bit slower because I'm getting older. Um, I mean, in my 20s, it took nothing for me to lose weight, but we ain't there anymore. <laughs> so anyway, um, the other thing that I'm thinking about doing, so besides that, I, my half marathons I'm planning on doing are going to be a cool location. So I am excited for it. And I'm excited to get my speed back because I think, I mean, I want to work on my speed while I still got it. You know, work, I could always do the longer distance stuff once the speed wears off. But while I can still run fast, I want to run fast. <laughs> so um, that's the plan for that. Uh, the other thing that um, I kind of came to terms with, because I know this about me. For those who don't know, I have a tendency of setting way too many goals for myself. Like I'm like a very overly ambitious person, almost to my own detriment. Like that I'm very successful to burn out. I burn out so easily because I set too many goals for myself and I try to do all. <laughs> like I don't have a, I, and I know this about me now and I've been knowing this about me, but now I'm finally at the point where I'm like, girl, we got to dial it back. So one of the things I said years and years ago is I want to run a marathon off of these states. And now my mantra is I'm going to try to run a marathon off of these states because I think when I set that goal back in my twenties, I wasn't thinking about injury. I wasn't thinking about me being mentally burned out. Never mind physically burned out. I've been mentally, I've gotten, I've had to battle myself mentally from being burned out from distance running and fighting back with that. Um, now we're not there. Now we're in a good place when it comes to that. But there's so many ebbs and flows when it comes to running, especially distance running, with it being the mental game that it is. And then I'm not even including life, <laughs> you know, how life be lifing and things like that. So now I say I'm going to try to run a marathon off of these states. Just like I'm going to try to run a half marathon off of these states. Realistically, I can see the half marathon off of these states actually happening though. Um, Cause I mean, it's not, a half marathon doesn't, I don't feel beat up after doing a half. Like even when I'm running slower, I feel fine. Like I could do 13 miles. I could walk 13 miles and be okay. Like I could walk that kind of distance. So running it, not an issue. Um, but I think since I may not, depending on how things turn out later on, if my body starts to feel like it's going to, to not, it's going to betray me and not allow me to do any more ridiculous marathons, we might have to switch the goal to running all the majors. Like most people have switched it because I feel like a lot of people used to be 50 state people and they switched to doing majors instead because it's easier, it's an easier goal to obtain. Um, cause there's only like six majors. I know they're trying to add more, but yeah, it's 
six or seven or eight, depending on how many they end up adding versus 50. Yeah. And at least with the majors, you're going to a different country. Yeah. <laughs> so we might be switching that goal around a little bit. Just like years and years ago, I said I wanted to do an Ironman. When I realized my swimming isn't that great, I don't want to do an Ironman. <laughs> you know, it sounds nice on paper, but I don't really want to do it. So I'm not going to do that, you know. And I guess I say all this to say there's nothing wrong with adjusting your goals. You're not giving up. You just have sometimes have to make adjustments. And in my case, I'm making multiple adjustments because I have the problem of being overly ambitious. <laughs> um, now, if you're under ambitious, I would maybe start writing things down to like maybe set goals for yourself. I do that, but the problem is I have so many different like papers, pens and papers of things I wanna do. And that's just how my brain works. Like I just always wanna do something kind of athletic and different and fun and I want to challenge myself physically, mentally, and all that. Um, I don't know why I'm like that, but <laughs> I guess this is how I am. Um, but anyway, so that's, I guess that's kind of all I have to say, really. Um, I do want to run some cool half marathons that are outside the country, too. So that's why the other reason why I'm saying I'm going to try to do 50 states. Like, because... I would love to run a half marathon in Montreal, Canada. I would love to run a half marathon in Puerto Rico. I would love to run one in Belize. Like, <laughs> you know, I, I would like to run in other places that is the United States of these Americas. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what ends up happening with that. But in the meantime, I'm going to continue to set my goals. And whether I accomplish them or not, I'm not going to beat myself up over it because... I know I'm overly ambitious. I know I set I set goals that sometimes are not attainable. Um, or I get started and I don't finish them. I mean, I'm an Aries. What do you expect from me? <laughs> it is the most Aries thing that I... When it comes to my goal setting, I'm, I'm such an Aries. That is like one of the traits that they always say about our sign. We, we're, we love to start stuff, but we don't finish it. <laughs> but... I finish races. I don't DNF those once I start it. It's just the goals for all the races I want to do. But anyway, um, hopefully you got something out of this video besides the Olympics part, but hopefully you got something as far as keeping you motivated. Um, but that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka The Mel Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.